So I believe that in the midst of a hostile culture, God has a witness of an entirely different people group called the Church of Jesus Christ, the community of the forgiven. That there is a place where you can go and the narrative of your life gets broken through the forgiveness of sins and you can dwell among a people where you're no longer defined by your past failures, which is what the, uh, the, the, the cancel culture does, and you have a new destiny in Christ Jesus moving forward and there's great hope and peace. Bearing witness of the kingdom of God. Bearing witness of his gospel. One of the things that is essential for us is that in Matthew 24, he, paragraph C, he talks about these, um, there are these, uh, th these wrong narratives that are floating around. And these wrong narratives, they, they happen in our personal conversations and they happen in, in every form of the media. I mean, every form of the media from all sides. They're, 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 um, hardly any of it, if any of it all, if, if any of it at all, connects the heart of the believer with God's agenda around his throne. And it's therefore essential that we pay attention to what it is that we listen to. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 6. He says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And that's, that's, that's striking to me. He doesn't say, and you will go through wars, though. We will go through wars. Um, we'll go through rumors of wars. But he puts an emphasis on the hearing. He, say, he says, you will hear of it. And the hearing of it is enough to create a troubled heart. And so Jesus says, you will hear of these things and see to it that you're not troubled. In Mark 4.24, uh, Jesus uh, says a, a, a similar thing. He says, uh, Mark 4.24, he says, take heed to what you hear. In other words, be intentional. Uh, uh, be careful. Uh, uh, be, uh, uh, be very proactive about what you put in front of your ears and how much and when and whatnot and so forth. Sometimes my friends they send me stuff that you gotta you know you gotta watch this and and because of my relationship with them if I watch it you know you know the next day it's gonna be like hey you know what you think and so I just tell them up front it's depending what season and, and, and I'll tell them say you know what there's not a good there's a good chance I'm not gonna listen to this oh you got this I said no no you don't understand just where I'm at right now I don't need to be listening to this trust me so I know me. We've got to be intentional. And then there's other seasons, those seven when I will listen. So it's not about listening versus not listening. It is about taking heed and paying attention to what is happening in the heart. Because here's what Jesus says in Matthew, excuse me, in Mark 4, 24. He says, take heed what you hear, because with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And you who hear, more will be given. In other words, what he's saying is this. Based upon what you hear, you will either move forward spiritually or you'll move backwards spiritually. That's essentially what he's saying. That based upon what you hear, we either move forward spiritually or we move backwards spiritually. Now, what does it mean to move forward spiritually? It means that we're growing um, in the understanding of the nature of Christ. It means that we grow in the, in, uh, in the experience of the presence of Christ. It means that we are growing in uh, we're growing in, in understanding the perspective of Christ, and we find greater resolve to to walk out the gospel in in, uh, in, uh, in our daily lives. We talked a little bit about the cancel culture, which is a condemnation culture. But the reason why I brought up the, the cancel culture is it, it was was not to pounce on the cancel culture. It is to alert us that the spirit of the cancel culture cannot enter into the church. That's the real point of bringing up the cancel culture. That we cannot take our cues from the cancel culture. And I, you know, I kind of jokingly use that example. It's that it's that one it's that one believer that starts unfriending other believers because they have a different political perspective. That is a baby version of cancel culture. You're saying, I'm done with you. And Lord goes, you don't get to do that. <laughs> We don't get to be done with one another. We, we just don't get to. I was asked uh, about a year or two ago, I was asked this question. And some of you are here when I asked this question. The question was this.
this. What do you think it's going to be? I'm talking specifically about our community. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Okay. <clears throat> the question was, uh, what do you think is going to be our biggest challenge when revival comes? And I said, it's when we find out that the multitudes will not be wearing MAGA hats. Okay. That's going to be our biggest challenge, and here's why. Here's what Jesus said. This is amazing, one of his parables. He says, the kingdom of God, he says, is like a dragnet catching all kinds of fish. All kinds of fish. They're going to come in with all kinds of perspectives and opinions and lifestyles and hairdos and tattoos and clothing and opinions and, I mean, the whole deal. And part of the problem is, is we're actually trying, part of the, part of the culture war is we're trying to clean the fish before we catch them. And beloved, it doesn't work like that. We can't catch, we can't clean the fish before we catch them. And so they're going to come in as is, in all kinds of ways. 